Hello, this is Mr. Doro. Today we're going to be talking about nomenclature. This is the first of our nomenclature videos and it is on binary ionic nomenclature. Nomenclature is just another fancy name for naming compounds and by the end of this I'm hoping you'll be able to properly write and name binary ionic compounds. Well first of all you have to know that these are not my rules for naming compounds. These are decided by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. That is the IUPAC, IUPAC, and those are the rules that we'll be following. You're going to need to know what that stands for. The International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry is IUPAC. But the formulas are determined by the ions that are formed to make each of these stable, and we get that from the periodic table. Well, we need to know what a binary ionic compound is. Binary, that word, means that it has only two different elements. If it has more than two different elements in the compound, then it's not binary, and there are different rules for naming them. But we're going to be talking about binary compounds in this. Ionic means that it is a metal and a nonmetal. In our case, that's what we're going to consider it, metal and nonmetal. And so when we have that, we have a binary, ionic, and then compound means that, of course, they're chemically joined together. Naming binary ionic compounds is really quite easy. All you have to do is write the name of the metal and then write the name of the nonmetal, but you drop the ending and you re replace that nonmetal ending with IDE. It really doesn't matter about subscripts on this because there's only one way that ionic compounds can join up with each other in order to be stable. They have to give away and accept the correct number of electrons. So I've got three examples written right here on the bottom. And so we're going to first of all write the name of the metal, and the name of the metal is sodium. And then the name of the nonmetal is chlorine, but we're going to drop the ending and put "-ide at the end, so they, when we do that, it ends up being sodium chloride. For this next one, we write the name of the metal, which is aluminum. Notice I'm not dropping anything off of there. And then bromine is the nonmetal. There are three of them, but remember, that's the way they have to, aluminum and bromine have to join up, a one Al and three Brs. So this is going to be aluminum bromide. Drop the ending and put "-ied". And this next one right here, we know it's a metal and a nonmetal. It's binary. It's got two different types of elements. And so this is going to be calcium, just the name of the metal, and then nitride. You drop off the O-gen on that, nitrogen, and you put I-D-E there. Now writing the formulas for binary ionic compounds is a little bit more detailed. First of all, you write the metal symbol, and then you write the nonmetal symbol. You check the charges from the periodic table, and then you crisscross. I call it crisscross applesauce meatball in my soup. Some people have called it swap and drop, and that works too. And you only do that if it's necessary. We're going to practice when it's necessary. Make sure you write down those, those three steps, and then we're going to practice it. Let's take just a second here and remember what charges each of these elements make when they make the stable ions. In group one, they make a plus one charge, and there we go, plus one charge. In group two, these make a plus two charge. And groups three through 12 generally will make a plus two charge. We'll talk later on in another video about some of the other charges that they make. And then we have to go under the stair step line here. Whoa, what a stair step line. These make a plus three, these make a plus four. And generally we don't really talk much about these down here, but about the charges they make, but they are metals and so they make cations or positively charged ions. When we talk about the nonmetals, then we can work backwards here, starting with the noble gases. These don't make no charge whatsoever on in group 18. And then group 17, the halogens make a minus one, and then a minus two, minus three, minus four, and we really don't talk about boron making a charge either. So we need to know which charges these make to make the stable ions so that we can write the formulas for our binary ionic compounds. All right, so we're going to go ahead and write these formulas. I've got three compounds, and we're going to write the chemical formula for them. I've written up here in the corner the old method that we had of, and it's actually a good method, showing where the electrons go and for magnesium and chlorine in order to make them stable. Well, this method that we're going to use, the crisscross applesauce meatball in my soup method, is going to be a whole lot easier than doing all that. So first of all, we go through our first step, which is we write the, the symbol for the metal, then we write the symbol for the nonmetal, and then we check the charges on them. 
If we look at the periodic table, we're going to see magnesium is in group 2, and it makes a plus 2 charge. Chlorine is in group 17, makes a minus 1 charge. You're always going to have a positive charge on the metal and a negative charge on the nonmetal. Since those two do not cancel out, this is if this was a plus 2 on this side and this is a minus 2 on this side, they would cancel out. But So what we have to do is we have to crisscross them. In order to crisscross, this 1 comes down here as a subscript on the Mg. The 2 comes down as a subscript on the Cl. We never take the charges with them as far as the positive or negative, and we never write a, a 1 as a subscript. So when we crisscross this one out, we end up with this. This 2 comes down here, the 1 comes down here, but we never write that 1, so we just write it as MgCl2. What that means is we need two chlorines in order to cancel out that magnesium charge or to make them both stable, which is the same thing that we had right up here in this situation, MgCl2. We just did it a lot easier way. So now we're going to do calcium oxide. For calcium, it is Ca, oxygen is a O, and then calcium is in group 2 also. Oxygen is in group 16, and it's a nonmetal, which is a minus 2. Now notice that those cancel each other right out. Since they cancel each other out, we don't have to crisscross. We can, we can just write CaO for calcium oxide. And for this last one right here, strontium phosphide. Strontium is SR, and phosphorus, that's where phosphide comes from, is P. Strontium is in group 2 has a plus 2 charge, and phosphorus has a minus 3 charge. Now those do not cancel each other out. They're not the same number with just opposite charges. So what we have to do is we have to crisscross. We bring each one of them down. So the 3 goes on the SR, the 2 goes on the P, and we get SR3P2, strontium phosphide. One more thing about this, if you were to make a mistake, for example, on calcium oxide and you did crisscross and you got something like this, Ca2O2, you want to reduce these down. There are very few circumstances when you don't reduce them down, but there are some, but we'll get to those in a different video. All right, well, that's it. So here's some problems for you to do. I want you to fill in the blank on each one of these. I either gave you the name or the formula, and you write the opposite one that I didn't give you in the blank. Uh, some of these, there are a couple of them, they may be a little bit challenging, but go back through and just follow the rules and you should have no problem whatsoever. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.